It's hard to believe that it's been a little over a year since Toyota invited me out to California to drive the then all new 2018 Toyota Camry. Now back then I was relatively impressed with the car. Now since then the midsize segment has been relatively quiet. We've seen a couple of refreshes here and there. We've seen one all new model. So Toyota has sent me over this latest 2019 Camry XLE. How does it stack up in the ever competitive midsize family sedan market? That's what we're here to find out. So looking at the design of the 19 camera, you can see Toyota obviously didn't need to make any changes to it. This is literally just a year after this all new eighth generation came out. And you can see the design definitely is very different versus the previous generation, but also somewhat familiar. Toyota really upped the level of quality and technology with this generation, specifically the headlight treatment. Whereas the past, you couldn't even get like LED headlights. Um, that now they've made LED headlights a standard across the board on every trim, including the base L. This XLE has an upgraded premium LED where you'll have an LED turn signal. LED low and high beams, adaptive headlights. No fog lights though, Toyota took that away with this generation, which is kind of disappointing. I think you definitely could use a little bit of a light here to kind of break up this grill. With speaking of which, this XLE version has its own unique grill, which I actually prefer the look of the grill on the SE and XSE, where they kind of get rid of this gray portion here and give you a little bit of an air intake, which is fake, unfortunately. But uh, the design's definitely, you know, a little bit bland or too aggressive, depending on what your taste is. Some people say the SE and XSE is too aggressive. I personally think this XLE is a little bit too bland. There's a nicely well-integrated um, radar sensor for the adaptive cruise control. As you guys know, Toyota Safety Sense P is standard. And then my tester has a front camera. It's got a 360 camera because this is the top of the line model. Now this is riding on Toyota's TNGA platform. This is an all new architecture that's been the basis of basically a lot of other vehicles. I've tested the new RAV4, the new Corolla, the new Avalon. It's now riding on this architecture. And when Toyota switched it over to this platform, they've increased the length of the vehicle. Its wheelbase got a two inch stretch at 111 inches long and uh, at an overall length of 192 inches long, it is just slightly longer versus the previous generation. What Toyota basically did is they made this vehicle wider and they made it lower to give this thing a little bit more of a more aggressive coupe-like look because as you guys know, sedan cells have been slumping to SUVs and they have to make these things look a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more stylish compared to the previous generations. Now the wheel sizes, this XLE comes with 18 inch wheels uh, wrapped in 235 series tires, 45 series tires. If you guys go for a lower trim, you'll actually get a Steely on the base L. So I'd highly recommend just skipping that. Or you can go up to a 19 inch wheel that's included on the XSE trim, which again, looks great. This wheel is actually similar to what you get on the SE, just kind of has a slightly different machine finish to it. Now looking at the rear end, you can see this XLE just looks kind of bland in comparison to the XSE with it with the lack of the underbody spoilers or those fake vents on the side, which I actually think looks better. What I do love about this car is it's got full LED rear tail lights, which are nice. You have an LED reverse light, LED turn signal, LED brake lights, and then an LED license plate tag light, which is definitely nice. Toyota didn't have to do that. That's really a, a premium luxury car feature, but they included that. Underneath here, this V6 version also gives you nicely integrated dual exhaust. Keep in mind, if you guys go for a four cylinder, it'll just have a single chrome tip, or if you guys go for the XSE, you'll have quad exhaust, which actually does add horsepower if you guys go for the four cylinder models. Now, in terms of the trunk capacity, uh, the little release is over to the side here. There's no hands-free function for the trunk release like you get on some competitors, but the Camry's trunk is pretty generous, 15.1 cubic feet of space. The seats also fold down 60-40. And then if you look underneath the floor over here, Toyota will give you a temporary spare tire so you don't have to deal with a fixed flat kit. So the outside of the 2019 Camry doesn't look any different, but let's hop into the interior and see some of the changes that Toyota has made. You can see here's the current key fob for the Camry. Uh, I've shown you guys this key before. It's the intelligent access key. You'll get this on the upper trims and up. Um, so basically just keep the key fob in your pocket or your purse. As you approach the door handle of the Camry, you can see there's a little area where you can touch your finger there. That will lock the doors for you if you want to unlock it. 
Just touch the back of the handle and then Toyota has a sensor. It'll unlock the door for you now. I really like the interior color combination of my particular tester with this two-tone, with the beige, with the black dashboard, the black steering wheel, the black carpet. Uh, it even extends over to the door panels here. It's a really nice um, looking interior. The seats themselves, they are a 10-way uh, power adjustment. No memory seats though, I'm surprised. Even this XLE trim, fully loaded, doesn't offer memory seats. They're only heated as well, three-level heated. Toyota doesn't offer ventilated seats. You have to go to an Avalon or a Lexus ES to get that. The seats themselves look pretty nice. I like the contrasting stitching with the brown piping. It overall makes a really good first impression. Now, Toyota says with this new platform, it is lower. So stepping inside the interior, you immediately feel that this sits a little bit lower, just not as low as some of the other competition. The new Accord, for example, comes to mind. This is low for a Camry, but it's not like sports car low. Now shutting the door, I'm sad to report that it doesn't sound very solid. Um, which is strange because when I first reviewed this car a year ago, I thought it did, but after hearing the door sh uh, sounds of the Mazda 6 and the Accord, reminded me that the Camry sounds a little bit tinny. Now, when you want to start the vehicle up, just keep the key fob in here, put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine. Now that V6 is silky smooth and it makes a great first impression. So a lot of you who prefer a naturally aspirated V6, you're gonna really love Toyota's. It doesn't, uh, there's no question to me why they decided to keep this engine. It's a great engine that revs really quickly. It's very refined. Now looking at the rest of this interior, you can see in contrast to the XSE that I last showed you guys, um, this has a more luxury oriented theme. You can see you've got some faux stitching here where it's soft touch. It's all soft touch on this upper portion of the, of the dash. The dash itself is very high because of this infotainment screen, this eight inch infotainment system, which is upgraded versus the seven inch in the standard models. It, the soft touch kind of extends over to the door panels over here where you'll have a, a silver painted plastic door handle here with some more silver paint, painted plastic trim. The windows are one touch express up down for all four. So that's really nice. You have a padded armrest right here where it's leather stitched like the door panels or like the front seats. It's all hard touch plastic down here with a little bit more storage. The steering wheel itself, the leather feels okay. I kind of wish Toyota offered a flat bottom steering wheel design, at least on the XSE. This is the same steering wheel, no panels on the wheel you get with this XLE. You have um, controls here for your audio, for your cruise control, for the driver assistance and whatnot. Um, the steering wheel is a manual tilt telescoping, which is the norm. Uh, I just tested a Ford Fusion that offered a power tilt telescoping, which was definitely rare. Um, you can see the instrument panel gauges. These are the seven inch upgraded LCD with the traditional analog. You have a 10 inch head up display, which shows all sorts of information that's part of a driver assistance package that my tester has. Over here, I wanna first go back to basically this menu screen here. The biggest addition, this is Entune 3.0, is this. When you go to CarPlay, you have Apple CarPlay now. This is the same system that I showed you guys in the Avalon and the Corolla and the RAV4. Great that Toyota added this. I'm sorry for you guys who bought a 2018 model. I'm not entirely sure if you can retrofit this. I wanna say yes, but um, you guys will have to let me know in the comments below if Toyota allows you to do that. The Apple CarPlay is a huge addition. It also includes Amazon Alexa. Sorry, Android users. No, Android Auto is included yet. Toyota is still working on that. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see it does offer a 360 camera with perimeter scan. This is part of the a driver assistance package that my tester has. It also includes the head up display. The resolution is okay. It's nothing like, you know, super shocking. That's really great quality, like some of the luxury brands. But again, this is not bad. The Lexus ES, I want to say, has a slightly better resolution camera, and it's mostly from the larger screen that they gave you. Um, down here, you can see there's a nice wireless charging area for your phone, which is nice. A little bit of storage underneath there where you could hide your phone if you'd like to. You have cup holders here. You have your three-level heated seats. You have your electronic parking brake with the different drive modes over there. This controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. It does include a sport mode over there. Uh, and it has a manual shift mode down here, or you can also access the sport mode from you know this, where this will kind of change between eco, normal, and sport. It's very rudimentary. It's nothing super fancy where some cars give you, you know, a big fancy display, a fancy readout over there. Now, um, going over here, I wanna first talk about the nav display. You can see Toyota hasn't really changed it, although they have increased the speed of this. The map graphics need, they could be updated to be honest, um, but it definitely gets the job done. You can see going to the home screen there, you can change this little home quadrant to show different things, whatever you'd like to see. Um, this area right here is nice and padded. It gives you two USB ports in there, a little bit more storage. Um, the glove compartment you can see is also a little bit on the smaller side. It's not lined with felt, but it is damped. I've seen much larger glove compartments in some of the competition. This wood trim is not gonna fool anyone into thinking this is real wood. It's really just plastic with a wood kind of stickered to make it look like wood. And then above you, the best part of the Camry's interior, big panoramic sunroof. This is standard on the V6 versions. I do wish that this black bar wasn't here that's kind of cutting in um, to the space, but if you guys don't like the sun, 
you can see it's got controls over here and it's got a power retractable sunshade, which is really nice. Um, overall, this interior looks great in the beige. Um, you do have slight visibility issues. You have a, you know, a nice updated screen here with Apple CarPlay. Um, you have good gauges. It's, it makes a nice first impression. I wish the door sounded a little bit nicer. I wish they were heated and cooled seats. I wish there was a heated steering wheel. And above all, I wish there were memory seats. But overall, a lot of you will still get into this interior of this new Camry and be relatively impressed. So for this generation Camry, Toyota did stretch the wheelbase and they were able to give you back that space in the rear seat. Now, first of all, getting back here, you can see the floor is not completely flat, obviously, but there's a good amount of legroom. Toyota says there's 38 inches. What disappoints me is the fact that there's a very lack of foot space underneath the front seat. So I would like to be able to get my feet under there to you know, give myself a little bit more space. In terms of features and conveniences, no heated rear seats, but I do like the fact that you have this big panoramic sunroof above me. That's an optional feature standard on the V6 versions. You have rear seat air vents, which are included on the XLE or XSE versions. You have two map pockets over here. You have soft touch materials and then automatic up down rear windows. And then Toyota also gives you a nice little armrest here with cup holders. So overall the space is nice, but just keep in mind if you're looking for more rear seat space, be sure to check out the Volkswagen Passat and the Honda Accord. So underneath the hood of the latest Camry, Toyota obviously didn't make any changes for 19, but the car got big changes for the all new eighth generation version last year. This is the top level motor. motor. This is the 3.5 liter gasoline direct injection V6 with port injection. That's what D4S stands for. And it got a big power upgrade last year, 301 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. That is way more, like 50 more ponies than what you get in those turbocharged four cylinders a lot of the competition. And the torque, while it is down, it still makes 267 pound-feet. The best thing about this engine, it runs on regular gas. Now, if you guys don't need a V6, Toyota still offers a choice of a base 2.5 liter four cylinder with about 100 less horsepower than this, or the hybrid version, which has about 208 horsepower and gets up to 51 MPG, which is literally one of the best MPG numbers in the business. This combination with front wheel drive and Toyota's new eight speed automatic gets 22 in the city, 32 on the highway. The Camry weighs around 3,600 pounds because it's got that nose heavy V6, uh, but zero to 60 times should be under six seconds. Let's get it out on the road and see how it performs. So the last Camry I drove, of course, was that hybrid model that I reviewed literally like six months ago. It's been a while since I drove the V6 version since I had the Accord and Camry V6. This XLE trim, I actually haven't had a chance to show you guys a review on because uh, let's face it, the XSE gets all the glory because it's a better looking design versus this more plain one. But you know, the same three and a half liter V6, eight speed transmission. Let's get out on the road and see how this combination all performs. <laughs> Now, just like the uh, XSE that I last drove with the six cylinder, this thing will burn out its front tires constantly. Anytime you go near the throttle with a heavy right foot like I do, um, it will, you know, spin out its wheel, its front tires, which makes me wish that Toyota offered this car with all wheel drive. I mean, they really should consider doing it. The Avalon doesn't even offer all wheel drive, but the Camry surprisingly is still a really good car to drive, a really great midsize family sedan to drive. Um, Whereas in the past, Toyotas have always been, you know, lackluster. They've just been so soft. Uh, the new Camry feels very buttoned down. It feels very stiff. It feels like a substantial car, which is a huge, you know, improvement over the previous generations, which just felt a little bit, you know, soft, a little bit, you know, tinny. Now I've come to a stop here. I'm going to put the transmission into its sport mode setting. I'm going to turn off the traction control, just the traction control, and I'm going to put my foot down and see how, how horribly this thing will put its power down. Yeah. Yeah, it will spin out its tires all the time. So basically, don't turn off the traction control and floor it in this car because you look like a jerk. Um, this car can really use all-wheel drive. But that being said, most of you will probably have the four-cylinder model, which won't be it won't do that quite as much. Even though it has 100 less horsepower, it'll still get to 60 in around eight seconds, which is plentiful. It's perfectly fine. This will do it in 5.8 seconds if you can put the traction down. And that's a problem with these, you know, six cylinder front wheel drive cars. The eight speed automatic in this car also is good. It's a Toyota design transmission. It's really responsive. Whenever I put my foot down, it'll quickly drop down the gears. It'll get out of its top gear, you know, to save you that fuel economy. And like all the other Toyotas, it's got the Toyota Safety Sense P, that beep that you heard, literally it showed it in the head-up display, it was telling me to brake because somebody was coming up very quickly uh, and that's what the radar sensor picked up. Now, in terms of the visibility, it's not quite as good as some of the competition. Uh, the new Accord comes to mind with its very low dash. There's a reason why everyone's going to that tablet-style screen that's placed up high because you can place the dash a little bit lower, as, whereas the Camry has a more traditional design that puts the dash up a little bit higher. You just kind of have to see over the dash, over the hood, you have this big pillar here, so so this takes some getting used to. It doesn't really affect the drivability of this car. 
But what it does affect is just, you know, your confidence. You can't really see out of it quite as well. So you're, you know, being a little bit more cautious until you kind of get used to things. Now, one thing I love about this car is the steering. It's a high point. Toyota's done a really good job with making this thing feel a little bit sportier to drive. The ride quality is also very good. It's very comfortable. It's also very quiet in here. The engine doesn't really, you know, make any, you know, unpleasant noises like some of the turbo fours in the competition. Um, it has just that six cylinder, you know, soundtrack, which sounds good. It's very refined. It feels Lexus-like. I mean, I've driven the Lexus ES350 plenty of times. The Camry doesn't drive any different than that Lexus. What it does fall short is the seat comfort. The seats aren't as soft and as comfortable. They don't hug you as well as the F Sport seats in the ES350. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, Toyota obviously had to cut some corners in that regard. The infotainment system in this car, um, I love the fact that it has Apple CarPlay. The driver assistance works well, although it can be a little bit too conservative and it'll just beep all the time. You typically couldn't attack corners in a Camry before, but now with this new one, it really does deliver in that regard. So, you know, where the Camry falls in the marketplace is it's not, you know, it, it's definitely not the sportiest offering that still belongs to like the Mazda 6 or the new Accord, but it's no longer like the vanilla bean, you know, boring driving dynamic car, even though this XLE version doesn't look all that impressive on the outside. It's still a relatively nice drive that'll be pleasant. You will drive this to work, to and from every way from work. It'll be easy. Um, it'll get great gas mileage in the process. You can also take it on longer trips. Uh, and if you guys don't need to haul a lot of stuff like you do with SUVs and you don't need all-wheel drive, the Camry still represents a really good choice. There's a reason why Toyota sells, you know, over 300,000 of these every year still. And it's because the Camry is still a pretty darn good vehicle. So although the Camry is no longer Toyota's best-selling model here in America, it still represents a pretty important vehicle in the lineup. I mean, if you look at their actual numbers, Toyota is on track to sell a little over 330,000 of these, which is still a great amount of vehicles, although Toyota's own RAV4, which I just drove the new one, outsells this by almost 100,000 units. So clearly, everybody is going to crossovers as opposed to sedans. So where does that leave the 2019 Camry? Well, as you guys saw, it's still a very practical, easy car to live with. This particular XLE version has a little bit of a softer look versus the XSE. It's got a comfortable ride. It's got a big back seat. It's got a nice interior. It's got a potent V6, which you can't get on the RAV4. And really, as long as you don't need the all-wheel drive capability, you don't care to sit up higher, you don't need the additional cargo capacity, a sedan will definitely still work for a lot of Americans. It's just too bad that a lot of uh, people here in America are just moving to crossovers so much. There's just much more practicality, which I get, but I just prefer driving a sedan uh, over those crossovers. So with all that said, what's it gonna cost to put a 2019 Camry in your driveway? Well, this is still a pretty affordive, affordable vehicle. It starts at around $24,500 plus destination. Now keep in mind, this V6 version is considerably more money. Most of you are probably gonna end up choosing an SE four cylinder, which is around $26,000, which represents a really great middle ground. You're gonna get almost 40 MPG for just the gas model. Uh, if you guys want a V6, the V6 engine upgrade is about $5,000 extra, but I will say that it includes the panoramic sunroof, which is itself is probably around $2,000 if you look, if you kind of break down the options. This XLE V6 with the navigation upgrade package, the driver assistance package that gives you the 360 camera stickers for $36,500, which is actually a little bit cheaper than the last, than that brand new RAV4 that I just tested. Although I will argue that the RAV4 is a slightly more practical vehicle. But if you guys are looking for a sedan, the Camry is still relatively very competitive, but just keep in mind, you gotta keep the options a little bit down compared to the competition because uh, you can easily get a Camry up to nearly $40,000, which is almost like Lexus territory. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Toyota Camry XL EV6. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.